Hey everyone, welcome to Sunrise Extra on our Thursday, April 30th, the last day of April. And we have been so fortunate to have some awesome live guests with us um, over the past couple of weeks. And joining us this morning is Joey Hamilton. He is the director of Visit Central Oregon, the uh, tourism arm uh, based in Bend there. Good morning, Joey. Thank you for uh, Zooming with us this morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you guys are doing um, something cool that I, I have a friend that works with you that we're uh, former colleagues over at the TV station in Bend, and she let me know about a really cool um, online and TV show and virtual kind of experience for all the folks that can't get over to beautiful central Oregon. Tell us about Adventure Calls, and then we can kind of put up the website and, and play one of the episodes while you're talking. Yeah, um, so it's a really unique opportunity that we have during this time. Um, as you said, it's a, a virtual journey that we're inviting viewers to, to take with us. Um, we've uh, partnered with a National Geographic adventure photographer, Chad Copeland. Uh, Chad's also worked with the BBC on the Planet Earth series. Um, he's worked with Microsoft on their People of Action campaign. So if you have a Windows 10 computer, uh, all of the, the default backgrounds are his. Um, yeah. And it really um, it, it's a, a, a show that shares stories of art, food, and culture in Central Oregon. Um, it's full of entertaining challenges, uh, <clears throat> cultural, cultural and historical education, uh, and also fun, and it's got a common thread of adventure in it. Well, so Joey, I always think of Central Oregon personally and for my family as like the ultimate R and R. I absolutely love that part of our state. But we get what more than a hundred people moving to the Portland area every single week, so they may never have been that way. Can you give us um, a better idea of what geographic region, what cities we're talking about, and then maybe give us just a few more specifics about the highlights of what somebody could do when they can visit again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Central Oregon has been known for a while as the outdoor recreation capital of the country. Um, so when you're talking about uh, uh, cities and towns, um, Bend is the largest town. It's about 100,000. Um, Redmond, Sisters, uh, there's a resort community of Sun River, Lapine. Uh, if you go out east, there's Prineville, which has a little bit more of a country vibe to it. Um, going up north, uh, you'll head into Madras. Uh, and then even further more north on the Deschutes River is Maupin, which is known for fly fishing and um, river rafting. And also uh, Central Oregon uh, includes the uh, Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. Mm. So uh, we are on the east side of the Cascade Mountains. Um, we get uh, about 12 inches of rain a year, which is less than San Diego. So lots of sun, uh, which, <laughs> I didn't know until I moved to Oregon. I always thought of Oregon as the west side of the mountains, you know, foggy, misty, rainy, uh, Christmas trees everywhere. Um, we're in what's called the high desert. So uh, you'll see a lot of sagebrush. Um, you'll see uh, river canyons. Uh, and then the further west you go, uh, high lakes, alpine lakes, uh, and finally the Cascade Range. Um, as far as activities, uh, it's endless. <laughs> I still haven't gotten through everything there is to do here. I mean, from uh, 300 plus miles of mountain biking trails, uh, hiking trails, Mount Bachelor is uh, the North America's sixth largest uh, ski area, um, ATVs, uh, world-class fishing, um, horseback riding, river rafting. I mean, the list goes on. I can, we could fill up the whole show with just going down the Joey, you didn't mention golf. You're killing my heart. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> this is yes. Rod Hill. Sorry. Uh, I was... <laughs> and talk about the golf. Yeah, talk about golf. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was just thinking about all, all the other things. Um, <clears throat> so Central Oregon, uh, we have the Central Oregon Golf Trail which is uh, 30 courses, about 30 courses, um, all within about 30 to 45 minutes of each other. We have three top 100 courses in Golf Digest top 100 list. Uh, those are Crosswater, uh, which is part of Sunder Resort, 
uh, Pronghorn, which has two courses, the Nicholas course and the Fazio course, uh, and then Tethero, which is on Ben's west side and backs up against the Deschutes National Forest. Uh, outside of that, there's Black Butte Ranch, which has uh, two, two award-winning courses, a uh, great family resort, um, and Brasada Ranch, which is a little bit out to the east of playing some desert golf. Um, we've got everything from uh, really, really hard courses. Tethero, I think, is one of the hardest I've ever played, um, uh, to um, more friendly open courses. So there's really something uh, for every ability, every skill level. Uh, and then don't forget the breweries. <laughs> Definitely. We are missing all of that stuff right now. Oh, yeah, now, breweries. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what has been, I mean, um, I have a lot, a lot of friends still in Bend in Central Oregon, and this, there's so much of the population that works in the tourism and hospitality industry, so I know unemployment has got to be, you know, pretty brutal right now there. What have you guys, as the tourism kind of agency over there, what are the numbers that you guys are seeing in, in like, loss of, you know, lodging taxes, which is a huge um, city funder, and, and just the amount of traffic in town? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, um, just in the region is Central Oregon, um, tourism as a whole, and we're talking direct spends or, or um, total, um, Im total impact of tourism uh, is about $2.2 .2 billion in the region. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's been affected significantly. So we're looking at um, some hotels are, are uh, not as, or some lodging properties are not as, uh, bad off right now because they're housing uh, essential workers, uh -huh. medical workers that might not want to uh, go, go home, home and mm -hmm. uh, risk the chance of infecting their family. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we're looking at up, upward, sometimes uh, upwards of 90% um, loss of, of room tax in some areas. Um, and it's a, a devastating hit. Um, <clears throat> but one that I'm pretty uh, sure that when this passes, uh, we'll be able to bounce back from fairly quickly. Can you tell us, Joey, more about those virtual tours? Because I was, you know, getting online and I was trying to look up some of it. But can you tell us a little bit more about specifically where we can go to see that and what kind of range we'll get when we hop online? Absolutely. So you can go to visit central, or excuse me, you can go to uh, adventurecalls.visitcentraloregon.com. Uh, that's the show um, site, and uh, you can also find them on our YouTube channel, which is Visit Central Oregon. Uh, we have an Adventure Calls playlist. So we have the first two episodes that are out now. Uh, you can watch the trailer for the third episode. Um, so things you'll find in the first uh, <clears throat> three episodes, the first one's called Winter Haven, so it explores uh, Central Oregon's winter playground. Um, you'll see snowmobiling, sled dogs, downhill skiing, um, alpine plunges in Elk Lake. Um, and then each, um, each show to kind of takes you on a culinary adventure. So this one uh, has the head chef at Elk Lake as well as um, uh, Sun River Brewing. Uh, Voice of the Shoots is our second episode. And this one's, uh, you'll, in each episode you'll find, um, kind of speaks to a different issue in the region. So uh, Voice of the Shoots really talks about the issue of water conservation um, and really how uh, that affects uh, everything from tourism to farming um, and everything else in between outdoor recreation. Mm -hmm. um, the third episode is called Mountain Respite, and that really focuses on uh, some summer play activities. So you'll see paddle boarding, uh, downhill mountain biking at Mount Bachelor, uh, rafting the Deschutes River, uh, you'll, you will see some golf in there, um, and again, some uh, locally Yay. sourced meals. Um, <laughs> and then as we get on, uh, episodes, episodes are released on Wednesdays at noon every two weeks, so uh, the next one will be next Wednesday, um, May 6th. Uh, we'll have, um, Chad will do an episode where he kind of rides across the high desert on a motorcycle, uh, so you see some images of Smith or some things of Smith Rock there. Um, we have a best friends episode, which uh, follows Chad with his dog companion. Uh, <laughs> Central Oregon is extremely dog friendly, much like most of Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, we have an episode called Tourism to Timber, which really talks about uh, how 
excuse me, Timber to Tourism, which really talks about uh, the transition from uh, the timber industry into the tourism industry in Central Oregon. Okay. Uh, and then the last two episodes, one is a military episode where Chad spent some time uh, with people in Central Oregon from the National Guard. Uh, and then the final episode will be um, all about the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. So uh, a really wide range of um, content there, um, really exciting, and hopefully it'll inspire people once travel is safe again to come back and visit us. Well, I love some of the, the video clips you were showing us. By the way, um, actually some clouds in Central Oregon this morning. That's the Sun River Resort camera behind me. But, uh, Joy, my, my question is, you know, in a normal summer, which obviously this is not going to be, but in a normal summer, what's the percentage of visitors into Central Oregon now in terms of how many are locals or how many people actually jump on a plane and fly, you know, from maybe, I don't know, the East Coast or the Midwest uh, to spend some time in Bend, for example? Um, so percentage of visitors, I can give you a direct number for the, the main resort area of, of Sun River. Uh, Sun River during off-peak non-summer times has about 2,000 um, local residents. Uh, and then if you get, you know, we're talking 4th of July weekend or, or peak high uh, summer season, um, that population increases to about 20,000. Wow. Um, so you see a lot of people come in. Um, I, we don't have exact numbers because uh, with um, companies like Airbnb, mm -hmm. um, we're just starting to see their occupancy reports. Um, but it, definitely you will see a lot more traffic in the summer. Um, trails are more crowded. Uh, interesting fact in the Three Sisters Wilderness, there are, only, there are over 75 access points, but most people only use five of them. So if you do come and visit when it's safe again, uh, I really encourage people to uh, get on the internet, do some research, and find some of the less explored uh, trails. Mm -hmm. What has been, um, I assume you're in Bend, right? You live in Bend? Yes. Yeah. So what has been kind of your, just going out and about to the grocery store, um, doing your, I don't know if you've been working from home or going in the office, but what is, I know like, uh, politically, Bend is very almost kind of down the middle with conservative folks and liberal folks. And so what's kind of been the vibe with like face mask wearing and these stay at home orders? Are people kind of getting antsy and wanting to open up things? Are they, you know, really heeding the orders? Like what would you say the breakdown is with folks really adhering to the stay at home stuff? Um. It's hard for me to tell as much because I really just do stay at home. Uh -huh. I try and uh, protect myself, my family. My fiance is pregnant. She also has an oh. autoimmune uh, oh, yeah. uh, thing. So I'm trying to stay at home as much as possible. Um, but when I do go out, so I'm the one in my family that does go out to the store. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's like 40% of people wearing uh, masks or? No, I'd say it's more than that. I mean, it's at least 50-50, maybe 60-40. Okay. Um, it really depends on where you go. Different, different stores have different regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, I know so. I just heard, a, uh, actually, while well, I was waiting for you on your program, that Costco is now going to uh, enforce mask yeah. wearing yep. uh, with their customers. Mm -hmm. um, I think overall people are doing a, a good job. Bend in Central Oregon does have a lot of wide open spaces. Uh, we are full of people who like to be active outdoors. Um, the amount of families that I've seen riding bikes together has uh, increased exponentially since mm -hmm. we've had these stay-at-home orders. Um, but I do get a sense when you walk around that everyone's just ready for this um, to be over, for things to be safe again, and for um, us to be able to get out and exploring and doing all the things that we love to do outside. You know what caught my ear when you were talking before about uh, places to go and maybe exploring something outside of your usual comfort zone when you go into Central Oregon, which ours is Sun River. I mean, we go to the same places all the time and love them. But do you have a favorite uh, go-to place um, that you may recommend to kind of explore some of those out-of-the-way places? Maybe kind of, like I said, get out of our usual routine. I, I know that'll probably spoil the secret for all the people who already know, but I would love to hear your opinion on that. Um, I, I think there's some amazing places 
places in Sisters. Sisters is fairly popular in the summer, but uh, if you have been staying in Sun River, uh, taking a trip or even stopping on your way in and your way down if you're coming over from Salem. Um, we've broken up the region into six sub-regions. Um, two of my favorites of those are what we call um, uh, Newberry Country, which is south of Sun, uh, south of Sun River. Mm -hmm. So the Pines, so we have the Newberry Volcanic uh, Monument, which uh, includes East Lake and Polina Lake, which has great fishing, Polina Peak. Uh, there's a um, obsidian flow there that you can walk through, lava flows, uh, and then great fishing to the west of that with Crane Prairie, uh, Wikiup Reservoir, the, the very uh, headwaters of the chutes, and then what we call River Canyon Country, which includes um, uh, Prineville, uh, Madras, Moppin, and Warm Springs. Uh, getting down to some of those parts of the Deschutes River, Steelhead Falls, if you've never been there, is amazing. Um, <clears throat> really giving you more of a, a, of a desert feel. Um, but it's hard to pick one. Central Oregon has so many different uh, areas, so many different subregions, and so many different geographic features that run through it. We're getting people on um, Facebook asking, Oh, maybe I could go over there this weekend. This place sounds pretty amazing. Are you opening up soon? What I was just looking through it to try and see if there was um, any like newspaper headlines from the bulletin over there of you know kind of latest stuff um, in Central Oregon. And it was you know Ben City Manager had said you know way back in March of like you know no vis just like the coast, you know it's easier to kind of spot on the beach mm -hmm. than it is you know in a in a city. But um, what are ho hotels doing? What are, I mean, are there any regulations to stop Airbnbs and stuff in place that you know of? Yes, so uh, let me just be very clear right now. Yes. Uh, Central Oregon is not safe to visit right now. Mm -hmm. um, right now our hotels are, have uh, restrictions that they can only house uh, essential workers uh, and healthcare workers. Um, so I would say stay at home, yeah. stay safe, save lives. Um, we, we want everyone to be able to come and visit soon, but now is not the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that a lot of people miss being here and we miss you too. Um, but now is not the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are people who have come here and they are staying at home here. Um, but you'll find, uh, that there are some fairly local, uh, fairly vocal residents um, that do not appreciate uh, if people are coming from uh, out of town for the weekend, then going back, then coming. Um, so please stay home at this point. Um, you can follow us uh, on our website. You can follow us on Instagram, visit Central Oregon. Uh, we will let you know as soon as it's safe, <laughs> safe to come back and visit us. Um, and <laughs> it will be very clear when the time is right. Yeah, and I think that's a great point that you make just in case there is any um, confusion about why we wanted you on the program this morning. And it is to kind of investigate some of the virtual beauty that you guys have going on. It is to when you're stuck at home and you're done with Netflix, <laughs> that you hop on a different uh, platform online and start planning that vacation, which one day we are going to be back to that. Not yet, but one day. This is a great time to explore some places that are not on your radar and just kind of enjoy the natural beauty that we have around us. And for right now, we can't go in person, but thank goodness for technology. Right, <laughs> Nina? I yes. mean, we would really be kind of cloistered if it weren't for that, but that is kind of our window on the world right now. Yeah, and how beautiful is that video from um, from those series? So it's oh, adventurecalls.visitcentraloregon.com. Yeah. They have three episodes up, more coming. Um, and what you said every what day of the week are they released, Joey? Wednesday at noon every two weeks. So the next episode will be uh, next Wednesday, next May Wednesday. 6th. Very cool. Just an incredible National Geographic level uh, 
caliber quality of video. So Unbelievable. thank you so much, Joey, for coming on. We've talked to um, a reporter over on the coast. We've talked to a reporter in far eastern Oregon. We've talked to north central Oregon and now uh, the Bend area. So really appreciate you waking up early with us. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we will see you central Oregon <laughs> on the other side. You're going to be even more beautiful when we are able to get over there. That is Sunrise Extra. We will see you tomorrow.